Good afternoon, and uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Pat, and welcome, Hikmet. Um, Western Union, a company that's been around a while, a brand that's known fairly well, a company that moves a lot of money. Tell me a bit about where the business is today and where it's going. Yeah, I mean, as you said, we are around 165 years. I say always, we are 165 years young. We are 165 years of innovative company. We reshape the industry all the time. And we do have a DNA that it's extremely innovative, and that's exactly what we are doing now. Uh, if you look at the company, we do about you know, uh, $5.6 billion revenue. We are in 200 countries. We are regulated in 200 countries. We have 500,000 locations, retail locations. We drop money to more than 1 billion accounts globally. We have 100,000 businesses, uh, which we serve small importers, exporters. And we have a very strong growth in digital business. It's our new adventure and new growth area in the digital area. Actually, we are, you know, compared with the competition, we are definitely leading the digital industry. Uh, our digital business does uh, about $300 million revenue. And next competitors are far away. You know, you see all these names, but they're far away on that. And it's growing very strong. The reason for that is uh, West Union has a base um, built over years, has a platform, it's unique, it has a huge brand awareness, is, uh, has a compliance programs uh, and compliance platform which is unique, uh, processes uh, a settlement program which is unique, we process about 31 transactions every second, we check everybody's, uh, you know, um, trans all transactions, we settle in 130 currencies, so I think where we are today is that we build this platform, we have a unique platform uh, which serves more than 150 million consumers worldwide. And uh, built on this unique platform, we are diversifying our portfolio. We are trying to get to new customer segments. And in fact, one example is our westunion.com business. Uh, Westunion.com business uh, reaching out to new customer segments, collecting funds via mobile phones from credit cards, from bank accounts, and sending money globally, in, dropping money globally um, in any country, in 200 countries, mm. in minutes, in a way that no one else can do that. And we are focused on that. We, by, with that, we are really getting new customer segments which we did not touch in the past. These customers. You say no one else can do that, but you just heard from PayPal. They've got Asimo, TransferWise. There's lots of other companies that are in your space. Well, you know, let's give, I give you. A, let's see in Denmark. Let's try to send money to Vietnam. Good luck without the Union. Uh, let's send, try to send money to Peru from here. Good luck without the Union. I think uh, people underestimate the Union strength. The things which we did for years, the powerhouse which we built for years, and it's complex, it's not easy. Mm. Uh, you have the anti-money laundering activities, you have to settle in the local currencies, you have the fraud, anti-fraud activities, so it's, uh, and you have to give the customer a trust. In all these discussions I heard, nobody uses the word consumer. Mm. Everybody talks about solutions. Everybody talks about uh, solutions in a way that it can fit in somehow in the chain. But if you look at West Union, we really look at from consumer, sent consumer, all the way to Vietnam to the received consumer. So we know the Danish cost consumer uh, sends money in Kron, and the receiver in local currency gets the money. And we settle that, we check that amount, we are, drop the money in minutes in a way, about and nobody talks about the needs of the consumer. About 80% of your business is based on consumer to consumer payments, right? And I think the assumption is that they're people who don't have bank accounts, they're migrant workers, that's the typical demographic. That's not true. 77% of our customers, more than 70% of our customers do have a bank account. But the way how the receiver wants to receive the money, most of the cases are cash. 
many people in France is a good example, for instance, right? Many people go in France to a location, they swipe their card at the location. <clears throat> we pull the money from the debit card. We do all this processing, the engine works in the middle, and drop money in Morocco in minutes in cash. Because the grandma who wants the money, and again, I'm talking about the consumer, the need case, the use case is in that moment cash. She wants to pick up the money, go to a doctor, pay the uh, 50, fr uh, 50 euros or lo in local currency, and pay the medicine for that. And I think in all these payment uh, meetings, what I'm a little bit missing is the consumer, uh, you know, consumer needs, voice of the consumer. I think I maybe explore this a bit further in that um, you know, when you look at Africa, for example, everyone talks about mobile money, mobile wallets, and moving money between M-Pesa and uh, other money transfer networks between Nigeria and Kenya and Uganda. Um, you know, surely that's going to squeeze your margins further. <laughs> it's not true, actually. M-Pesa is a partner of us. They choose, mobile, many mobile companies choose us to get money on their wallet. Actually, in fact, 30% of the transactions from UK to M-Pesa account in Kenya are done from a retail location in UK, sent to a mobile wallet in Kenya, and it's done via West Union, uh, because no one can drop money in that moment in the M-Pesa account in that way. We have about 20, more than 20 mobile wallets worldwide. We have in Philippines, we have in Indonesia, in different parts in India, different parts of the world which we drop money. Now, mobile wallet is a, I mean, we can drop money in any way, to a mobile wallet, to a cash, or to an account. We just ask the customer how the customer wants. Mm -hmm. If the customer chooses mobile wallet, we'll drop money on a mobile wallet. If the customer chooses cash, I can go to a, one of my 500,000 locations. If the customer chooses, chooses account, we'll drop money on an account. What about if I want it in Facebook or WeChat or something else? Well, I mean, if you look at the social media partners, they have consumer relationships. And the consumers are trying to, and they will try to keep their consumers on their social media platform. And many consumers are asking Viber or to WeChat saying that, um, can I do more? And WeChat wants to answer to Chinese customer in America, yeah, you can use your mobile phone we, you can, while you chat, while you discuss with your partner, you can at the same time drop money and say, hey, happy birthday, mom, in China, mm -hmm. and use Western Union. In fact, our Viber, app, if you go on Viber, you use the send money, and then you automatically from Viber account, you can send money to 200 countries worldwide immediately uh, with, via Western Union. So uh, this social media, who has a lot of customers, are looking for a platform like Western Union, which they can say to their customers, hey, stay with me, stay Viber customers, because I'm working with Western Union, and I can serve 200 countries, 200 nationalities, from the US, for instance, to any country you want to send money. It's really the opening their pla uh, the platform via West Union to their customers, making, doing more, tra uh, more things than only chatting, also mm -hmm. sending money. I think that's the new area what uh, the, custom, uh, uh, the big social media companies are doing. And they need a partner which is trustworthy, which can do these things. And if you only work with a partner who can do only drop money to one country and to say no to the other customers, I don't think that's what the social media wants. You know, they, lose, they need a partner like Western Union, which operates in 200 countries. You kind of make out that it's very simple to use Western Union, but underneath you've Im implied it's very complicated. So for example, um, money laundering through Western Union must be something that's quite easy because everything is anonymous. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, it's the opposite. Um, you know, if you look at the, our, our anti-money laundering activities, um, and if you have an engine like West Union, which does 31 transactions every second, um, you need a huge engine, anti-money laundering activity engine. We have 20% of my workforce, 20 to 25% of my workforce are working on the anti-money laundering area. And we uh, invest, I don't say even, I see that as a competitive advantage, I don't see even as cost. We invest about 200, uh, more than $200 million every year on the anti-money laundering activities. We were close with 200 countries, governments, law enforcement, uh, because, you know, I don't want bad money in my network. Mm -hmm. We want to move money 
good money. And every money, actually, we move, it's a good money because it changes people's life. I just want to don't have that perception that Western Union has that. It's my duty as CEO, it's our duty, it's my board's duty also, to protect our customers to uh, be aligned with the regulators. That's why we invest $200 million every year. And uh, I think it's going to continue. It's not something that disappeared from the industry. It's, I encourage everyone to look at it, that area. I encourage everyone really invest in that area. You can't avoid that. You can't also avoid saying that regulators, we don't like you, don't look at our business. I think it's, you have to work together with them. It's a both side educational process. You have to sit down and say, okay, how do we move really good money? Money will move anyway, right? It should move uh, you know, cross-country, inter-country, but it should move in a right way, in a fast way, in a very compliant way. I know that Europe and America are your biggest geographies, but surely China, India must be your biggest growth opportunities. Well, I think you, if you look at our, uh, definitely China, India, huge uh, opportunities. But if you look at the West, beauty of the Western Union is that none of our countries out of the U.S. is bigger than 7% of our revenue. Morocco is a big country for us, Turkey is a big country for us, Mexico is a big country for us, China, India is a big country for us. So what we do at West Union is that we have really the portfolio. And we look at the portfolio. In fact, we, yesterday we launched uh, a new platform. And one of the portfolios we have is our uh, cross-border business-to-business money transfer. It's a small part of our business. It's only 7% of our business, strong growth part of our business, and it's a huge opportunity. With the new platform we launched, we're going, uh, serving now 40 countries and connecting in, uh, importers and exporters together and making life easy for them that an in, uh, exporter gets the money and invoicing side also as soon as possible. Because it's important for an SME that it gets the cash flow immediately. Mm -hmm. When an SME gets the cash fast, it will create jobs, it will create jobs, it will create goods, make more goods, can, can export more. So what we are doing is now, with the importer-exporter way, we are connecting the platform, and really West Union is going, going with that area, the new, new customer segment. And India and China are huge markets for us. I mean, there are millions of SMEs in India and China, but it's hard if you say, uh, sit in uh, Kerala and you're a small SME, you produce goods, it's hard to find a partner in Venezuela where you can export import. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to export their goods to Venezuela or they want to export a good to Canada or to, uh, to China. And then collect the money, it's even harder. Mm. to invoicing and in the right currency fast way. So that's, that's exactly what our, uh, what our strategy is, what we announced to connect these importers and exporters. So I'm guessing strategically your key areas of focus is growing the non-consumer business, the business to business piece, and growing the, the digital business. Well, I mean, if you look at that, the strong growth at West Union will definitely come from new customer segment on the digital side and from the B2B side. But we have an extremely resilient business, which is our retail money transfer business. People really going to a location, uh, putting cash and picking up cash. Even in 2009 crisis, uh, where world finance market went south, everybody went down. Our business, not, we were only declining single, uh, lower single digit revenue-wise. Ex customers are extremely re resilient. They want to use Western Union. They want to send money. And um, sometimes they send lower principal, not $300 principal. They send $250, $270. But they do send money. The transactions continue. So it's important that we have the retail money transfer business, our core business, producing our strength. If you look at that, you know, our, we did about, you know, our, uh, our profits are about $1.2 billion. We have about billion dollar cash flow. With that machine, we, with our uh, core business machine, we are investing in the digital. Mm -hmm. We are getting uh, partners, new bank partners, but also partners like Viber, like WeChat. At the same time, we are launching and the B2B business of platforms like Edge, Edge, uh, which is uh, very digital, connecting digital. So uh, we are upgrading our technology and uh, we are investing in the, uh, in the um, uh, compliance programs. 
So this platform, we are really upgrading this platform to serve to new growth areas. I can see lots of activities, but there must be lots of concerns as well in that your margins are getting tighter and tighter if I'm tracking your record of decreasing margins over the last decade. So in the future with things like Bitcoin, for example, things like Asimo, are you not going to see your margins squeezed even more? Well, I mean, we had always competition. I, I guess you are talking about the competition. The, yeah. um, the, uh, you know, our margins are about 20%. For a company like you know financial institutions, about 5.6 billion in uh, in, in in revenue, 20% margin is very healthy. I think that it's we believe that we will continue to keep the margins in a in a healthy way. Uh, we are it's we are very competitive, and uh, the beauty of Western Union business is that you know we always had the competition. But competition is, let's say, France to Morocco is one competition, Russia to Uzbekistan is another competition, China to Japan is another competition, US to Mexico is another competition. And we adapt our competitive environment against the single competitors. And we are extremely flexible on that. Actually, it sounds like we are one big company, but we have extremely good people on the field. And they're street fighters. Uh, they are competing with the competition and digital environment the same uh, We do you know our our prices for instance US to India is extremely competitive. We are gaining market share um, you know yesterday the uh, Mexico numbers came out uh, West Union again winning market share US to Mexico mm. And there's always rumors about your business being anti-competitive, though, with these exclusive, exclusivity contracts. And I know the European Union uh, is investigating potentially what those mean. Is that something that you see as an issue? I don't know if they're investigating or but there was a, at least a question on yeah. that. Um, but um, I think, you know, what we've done is that we have agents which we work very close together. Our agents like Deutsche Postbank, for instance, I've been uh, our agent more than 20 years. In fact, I'm now, now flying to China to celebrate our 20 years presence in China, and we have four agents there, big agents like China Post Bank or China Agricultural Bank and China Pay, and we are celebrating our 20 years. And 40 agents, top 40 uh, agents, have been 17 years with us exclusive, and they have chosen the exclusive because they want to have a partner. They don't want to switch partners. They want to have a partner. They are trustworthy. They can work with them. They don't have cash flow issues. They know that the customer will get the money. They know that if the customer goes to a Deutsche Bank or La Banque Postal location, they can say, yes, use West Union because the money in Ghana in the last mile will arrive or in Vietnam in this account will come. It's a trust they build that. I know you've got to rush to uh, get, get your plane to go to China, but just on a final thought then, you've just come from Athens where you were visiting with Afghanistan and Syrian migrants and uh, maybe you can give me a view as to what you found there. Yeah, I, 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 yeah it's, it's, you know, there are two things. First of all, most of our customers are, have uh, migrant backgrounds, mm. obviously. I'm a migrant. My grandfather and my grandmother was a war of, uh, you know, uh, migrants. They escaped from a war in the First World War and everything. So first of all, obviously, the personal thing helps, uh, you know, it's obviously something influences me. But what's happening in Europe currently, it's, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy for a you know, Fortune 500 CEO to see that and not speak up. Uh, it's not easy uh, to get to these people. And they, you know, I met a doctor on the, in, uh, in Greece yesterday, and he was there with his family. And he said to me, my only wish is that I could have a hot shower for my child. They're sleeping on the street. He's a doctor. His, frau, his, his, his uh, wife is an um, uh, engineer. And they have two kids, mom. And I think that, uh, you know, I ask everyone to speak up. To be union, and it's, it makes me a little bit, uh, a little bit disappointed that um, politi European Union politic doesn't speak up here. By the way, there are 60 million worldwide refugees. I'm not talking about immigrants, refugees, and we are talking here about only five percent of the refugees, which is impacted. I think it's our duty, because it's happening here, to speak up and help them and not avoid them. What was the tweet that you sent? That was yeah, I tweeted uh, you know, some pictures and said, don't avoid them, just support them. That's our human duty. A great way to finish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.